Hello, my name is Mira Dougal, and I am a senior studying applied mathematics at Colorado School of Mines. For my research, William Daniels collaborated on this project with me, and Dorit Hammerling was my advisor. Um, the title of our research project is Optimizing Genetic Algorithm Parameters for Atmosphere Carbon Monoxide. So the main source of carbon monoxide in the southern hemisphere are large vertebrates. This makes CO a useful proxy for fires. Fires are influenced by the change in atmosphere and oceans, which can be measured by something called climate indices, which measure the variability in sea surface temperature and wind. Thus, the atmosphere carbon monoxide is modeled using climate indices as predictive variables. These models can help countries prepare for large burn events. So in figure one, we can see the seven different regions in the Southern Hemisphere that we're going to create multiple linear regression models for, along with the average CO. In the plot B, we can see the four different climate indices that are shown, along with the standard deviation of carbon monoxide. So this is the multiple linear regression model that we use in our research, where CO of T is a carbon monoxide anomaly in a given response region at time C, Psi are the climate indices, and tau is the lag value for each index and month. So we have this lag value because our models are focused on prediction. Therefore, we want to use the current climate index values to predict future CO. So we have the R package, Red Climate Chem, that has three different variable selection algorithms to produce the multiple linear regression models. And these um, variable selection algorithms are the exhaustive method, which always finds the best possible model, but is most computationally expensive. Subwise regression, which often fails to find the best possible model, but is computationally inexpensive. And the genetic algorithm, which is implemented as a possible middle ground between exhaustive and stepwise. So we are performing an optimization study on the genetic algorithm to find the best balance between runtime and accuracy. So on the left hand side, this is the flow of the genetic algorithm. And we implemented the genetic algorithm in Red Climate Chem via the GeoMulti package. And it is a stochastic variable selection technique that is based on probability and will potentially produce different results each time that you run it. So this algorithm converges to the best model by continuing to modify a population of models. And there are various parameters in GeoMulti that affect how this modification process occurs. And this is what we are doing our optimization study on. So we started our study with four covariate models. And here we can see the five different parameter values that we chose. I don't have time to get um, too in depth on what they individually do, but I can answer questions on that later. Um, you can see the default values for them in the middle column and the values that we study on the right hand side. So um, we started by varying each parameter um, while holding all the other parameters constant or fixed at their default values. Um, and then we would vary this singular parameter over the given array of values. Um, and so here we can see the x-axis shows the different parameter values uh, for population size in this case, with the default value in bold. And then there are two y-axes, runtime and proportionate differences. Runtime, we can see the exhaustive runtime in the dashed line, and the circles represent um, the runtime for that specific value of population size. And then the proportion of differences is the number of models different from the exhaustive method over the total number of models. So our, our um, goal in this study is to choose the value that both minimizes the runtime and the proportion of differences. So the population size, we chose an optimal value of 40. So here for mutation rate, we're gonna do the same thing. Um, look for the value that minimizes both runtime and proportion differences. And so we chose 0.2 as our optimal value. For sex reproduction rate, we chose 0.001. And for immigration rate, we also chose 0.001. And for the consecutive size, we chose the optimal value of 2. So here we can see the optimized parameters that I had just mentioned. And the ones in red are more sensitive to change, meaning that as you change their values, the proportion of differences or the runtime will significantly increase or decrease compared to the other ones. So we then ran um, the optimized values and we found that the runtime decreased an average of 11.8%. And the proportion of models um, only differed from the exhaustive search by 0.8%. To 8%. So we tested the same parameters on five covariate models now. And we wanted to test five covariate models because we wanted to see if our results will scale with the size of the model. So, first, we did the same thing like we did in the four covariate case. We varied parameters one at a time to estimate optimal range. 
Um, and then we continued on by testing parameters two at a time using those ranges that we found from the previous um, varying parameters one at a time. So here we can see there's immigration on the x-axis and consecutive on the y-axis. So this is just an example of varying those parameters two at a time. Um, where the top left, for example, we see there's a very high proportion of differences, but a very low um, runtime. And then the bottom right, we see a very low portion differences and a high runtime. So you want to choose a value that's somewhere in the middle. And this runtime is plus or minus um, that of the exhaustive runtime. So we are still in the process of varying two parameters at a time for the five covariate case. Um, but we have moved our study from my personal laptop to the HPC system called Cheyenne at the National Center for Atmospheric Research due to very long run times. Like on the last side, we saw that one of the run times was 20 hours on my own computer. So we hope to come up with a parameter combination that makes the genetic algorithm fall between stepwise and exhaustive. So these are my references and thank you for listening.